the AH-6 Little Bird, also known as the Killer Egg. Rank 6 American Attack Helicopter with a battle rating of 10.0, introduced in the update Sky Guardians. It behaves like a scorpion. They're fast, quick, and if they see a threat, they sting. But what type of armaments it uses? How does it feel like? And is it really a good helicopter? Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bob Dickinson and today we are going to review the AH-6 Little Bird. The one that is... fresh out of the oven. Welcome to the Armor and Modular Protection Analysis, where we basically analyze the armor and modules inside of a vehicle. Today's helicopter is the AH-6 Little Bird, also known as the Killer Egg. The first thing we need to take a look at is the crew. Just like the standard Huey cabins, the gunner is on the roof side, while the pilot is situated on the right. Both of them have access to CCIP on all of their weapons, making the aim much easier for the crew and the player, even though it is not really visible in the cockpit due to lack of any gun sight on the helicopter. It has one of the best optical zooms in the entire game, with an auto tracker IRST, a radar warning receiver, a laser designator, and third generation thermal sights, and night vision. It is in fact quite fascinating to see all of the requirements of an attack helicopter compressed into a platform this size, giving it a great amount of stealth capability, if you know what you're doing. This much compression can also lead to a critical hit every time someone tries to fire machine guns at you. With basically no armor protection for the crew, your only hope is the flak jacket module. From the front, you will see the problem even further. Any shots hitting the helicopter from the front will most likely hit the crew. And even if they don't, the other modules, such as fuel tanks, will make up for it. It has three self-sealing fuel tanks, which can carry these fuel presets. The maximum of one hour usage really says a lot about its size. They also don't have protection, and are visible with the naked eye. No x-ray needed. It has two oil cooling systems, and just like the fuel tanks, one of them is visible with the naked eye. Again, no x-ray needed. But the other one is weirdly placed in front of the engine, and on the x-ray it says it is on top right of the engine, but we just really can't see it on the model. The engine on this helicopter is the Allison 250 C20B, same engine that was installed on the Messerschmitt Bolko Blum B0105. However, instead of having 50 kilogram force, this one has 30. At the end, you have the transmission, propeller shafts, and the traction of the control surfaces. When it comes to the mobility, the AH-6 is among the best helicopters in the entire game. The six-blade fully articulated rotary system, alongside its lightweight configuration, can make this helicopter a great and maneuverable unit. On the other hand, Allison engines are quite sensitive, and any rapid reaction or extreme maneuvers can stall the engine, so keep an eye on this guy. Please know that the maneuverability of this helicopter will be worse once you carry the max fuel and other heavier armaments. The armaments that the AH-6 Little Bird carries are quite varied compared to the Israeli MD-500 Latout. It has four pylons, Two of them are exclusive to the M134 miniguns, with excellent fire rate and cooldown. The other two can also carry out two various pods of 2.75 inch hydro rockets, both pods are accessible when stock, APKWS2 laser guided rockets, both M282 and M151 variants, which can be unlocked to tier 2 modifications, and most importantly, AGM 114 Kilo Hellfire 2 missiles. Two can be carried on each pod, unlocked at rank 4 modifications. The Hellfire 2s are quite strong, and can pack a punch. With great penetration and tandem charged warhead, combining it with great thermal sights and amazing optical zoom, you can easily pierce through any armor with any protection with ease. Unless it's a T-34 driver's hatch. Though, please be aware of the enemy threats such as the K-50s, Orbital Strike K-50s, and most important of them all, Ground K-50s. What I'm trying to say is that your helicopter is really tiny. Sure, you're hard to spot or even hard to hit, but SPAAs with radar, K-50s or any other helicopter with sharp eyes and thermals, any plane, whether if it's close air support or air superiority fighter, is a major threat to you. I would not recommend to use this guy with a vehicle that has battle rating of 10.3 or higher. Then, you will face up against one of the most recent and dangerous SPAAs in the game, the Panzer S1 and the Tor M1. Both are devastators and true guardians of the skies. 
and you will be nothing but a pest to them. And remember, please watch out for your surroundings. Enemy K-50s might put their laser designators on you. Since you have no laser warning receiver, you need to be 10 times more cautious about it. Always be careful of what you're doing. You don't have any doors to protect your crew, but at the same time, you can hear your surroundings. Listen carefully, use your RWR, and look around for threats. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, this thing lacks countermeasures. These are the basic tips I could give to people when they're playing any helicopter in ground RB, despite me not having any interest or experience in ground RB, but either way, be careful out there. When it comes to heli PVE, this helicopter is a hit or miss. The problem with it is that it does not carry enough punch to compete against other helicopters such as K-50s or Apaches or any other helicopters, with only two pylons and two machine guns. The maximum amount of four Hellfires might not be enough to destroy SBAs of convoys or enemy assaults and defenses. Sure, they might be enough to get the Rollins on a base, but still, it depends on your choice. Would you like to sacrifice two Hellfires for Hydro Rockets and more explosive mass towards the bases, or you need to get the SBAs first with your AP KWS. It depends on you. I'm going to recommend my own armament presets, so if you like to, you can copy them and use them at your disposal. My preferred armament presets are Base Destruction, consists of two Hellfires and one Hydro Rocket. Dual Guided Rocketing System, or DGRS, consists of APKWS2s with M282 and M151 on each side. The M151 counts as a high-explosive rocket with low penetration, and the M282 counts as an armor-piercing rocket with half of the explosive mass of a Hydra. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is a fully dedicated air attack preset, useful for enemy bombers and attackers, or possibly even same BR helicopters in ground RP. The APKWS2s with Hydra rockets, both the M282 and M151 variants, and last but not least, APKWS with Hellfires. These are my personal armament presets that can help you work things around Heli PvE and maximize your performance in this game mode. For the module research priority, I would highly recommend you to start your grind with the Flag Jacket module, as it helps the protection of your crew. Again, as I said, this is my personal grinding preference. I am more comfortable with ATGMs, so ATGMs are my priority, then the mobility. After the Flag Jacket, you can grind the APKWS, then the replacing helicopter blades, NVD, engine, and then the AGM-114 Kilo, and then the compressor. The rest is on your own at which one you like to grind first, but hey, this is the way I would like to do it. All I can say about this helicopter is small, fast, crazy, nimble, and vulnerable. It is powerful and powerless all at the same time. It gets easy kills, and it gets killed easily. We'll save that five times. I almost forgot to mention that this helicopter has seven MFDs, which five of them are functional in War Thunder. Holy Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, my meme senses are coming back, so thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, maybe you can subscribe to my channel, like the video, dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Bob Dickinson, signing out.